Welcome back to Shop Life. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your clutch on your E46. So we have here is a 2005 325 CI. Uh, someone actually converted this to a manual transmission. The problems that the customer is facing is tough gear engagement, as well as pedal feel is very bad. I've already bled the slave cylinder, all that stuff. Now that's helping. I'm pretty sure that pressure plate's worn out, as well as the clutch. So we're gonna go ahead and replace everything with the clutch kit that I got from Luke. And I know everybody's been requesting a video on how to do a manual swap. So pretty much like a five or six speed swap into an E46 that came with an automatic. I've got a customer who's actually waiting on parts for me to go ahead and make a video for you guys on that swap. So as soon as the parts are here, I'll be making a DIY that way everybody can go ahead and do it to their cars if they have an automatic. Let's go and get started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off by taking off this exhaust. It's held in with four 15 millimeter nuts right on the flange. This is the headers, they go straight to the engine. Then we follow this exhaust all the way down. It's actually missing a section right here where it'll have four 13 millimeter bolts. And this right here is the actual mount, a uh, rubber mount for the exhaust. So if it moves around and doesn't vibrate, this one's also missing two more bolts. And the heat shields. And it's also missing all the heat shields and all that. But that you will usually see after you take the exhaust off. Once I take the exhaust off, I'll show you guys. And you just keep following it down. Then you're gonna have the muffler right here mounted with two rubber mounts, two 13 millimeter nuts on each one. Here's one mount on this side. And then one mount right here. This is actually a 330 exhaust. The car itself is a 325CI, but it's an M56. The M56 engines, which are the SQLEVE engines, they came with a 330 exhaust. So it's got a vacuum flap right here. So you wanna be sure to go ahead and remove this vacuum hose. So let's go ahead and pull off that vacuum hose, just like so. All right, now let's go ahead and take off the bolts and drop the exhaust. All right, now you can use a helper or a jack to go ahead and help you lower this exhaust off of the car. So we're gonna put the camera down and go ahead and pull this exhaust straight off. All right, now that we have the exhaust off, we're gonna go ahead and pull off this drive shaft. Ideally, you would have a uh, heat shield right here, which is gonna be held in with about four 10 millimeter bolts. But since we don't have that, I can't really show you. But the bolts would be, if they were here, there would be one right here, one on this side, and then two more right here. And it'll be tucked in underneath this heat shield right here. So once you have the heat shield off, then that would expose the rest of the drive shaft. Let's go ahead and pull this off. What you're gonna need is an 18 millimeter open-ended wrench, 18 millimeter socket, and an external to uh, Torx 12. All right, so what you would wanna do is you wanna go ahead and mark your drive shaft. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do this. I usually don't. But if you want to, you can go ahead and mark it. That way you put it back the same spot where you took it off from. But it's only three bolts, one right here, one right here, and one on the top. That's what's holding the drive shaft to. There's a guibo right here. And the guibo, if it's all cracked up, you would want to replace that as well. And that's another three 18 millimeter bolts. And then you also have the center support bearing, which is right in the center of the drive shaft. Uh, this one's also been replaced. If it wasn't, you would want to do that while your drive shaft is out as well. You want to have something so that way the drive shaft doesn't move or you can just have someone sitting inside pressing the brakes. Or you can just put an open end wrench on the back of the 18 and go ahead and pull it off. So as you saw the e-brake only was working on one side of the car. Since there's no limited slip differential on this car, that means the drive shaft will still turn the whole differential in one of the wheels. So I went ahead and took the wheels off and I'm going to show you guys a trick with just some screwdrivers if you run into the same problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just come around where the caliper is and stick a screwdriver right between where the caliper is and the caliper carrier and the rotor. So what will happen is even when the uh, rotor tries to move because of the axle, it won't let it. We're gonna do that for both sides. There we go. Once you have that initial turn completed, you can go in and put your open-ended wrench behind the bolt where the nut is at, pull the nut, 
Bam. Take the screwdrivers out. Go ahead and make the other bolts visible so you can do it. Let's have both right there. Put the screwdrivers back in. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and keep one bolt in there. You can go ahead and take the nut off, but just keep the bolt in there. So we can go ahead and take out the Torx, E-Torx bolts for the differential side. All right, so depending on the type of differential you have and your whole configuration for your car, you might have a different style of a drive shaft. For us, we just have these E12 bolts. There's only four of them, and we should be able to just go ahead and pull those off, and then the whole drive shaft will come off. All right, so now that we have all the bolts out, go ahead and pull out that one bolt that we left in here. I don't want to wreck your Fridays. Today is Friday. Today is Friday. Take your time. Damn, come on. It's my jam. Who's this? Is this Sam Hunt? That's I what don't know. Name? Tell, tell them what you're doing. Alright, so I'm prying off this drive shaft. Alright, so once you have all the bolts out, now you just want to pry on the drive shaft just a little bit so you can go ahead and release this little joint that's been made from it being on there forever. So once you have that released, then we can go ahead and release the center support. Take out the two 13 millimeter nuts and then the whole thing will just pop right out. Now what you want to do is you just want to support the drive shaft. Go ahead and remove the center support. Then you just want to bring it down. Alright, so we got the drive shaft off. Alright, so now that we have the whole pretty much underneath the car all cleared out, only thing that's holding the transmission in now is this cross member, which is held in with four 13 millimeter bolts and then all the bolts attaching uh, the transmission to the, the whole bell housing to the actual engine, which are just a bunch of e a couple of 10s, a couple of 12s, and a couple of 14s. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and go up uh, into the cabin, go ahead and pull off the shift knob. Now we can drop this whole shifter assembly through here. We'll go ahead and undo all four of these bolts, drop the transmission just a little bit so we can access all the bolts from the top. Uh, we can access all the bolts that are on the top of the bell housing and all the ones around it. And then we're also going to have to go ahead and disconnect uh, this uh, slave cylinder line. We're just going to go ahead and disconnect that. Uh, if you have some kind of fluid line clamped or something, this is where you will want to put it. That way all your brake fluid doesn't leak out of your master cylinder. Let's go ahead and bring the car down and go ahead and take off the shift knob. Alright, so let's go ahead and pull off uh, the shift knob. You just pull it straight up since it is a manual. Holy f let's go ahead and pull this off. Somebody fuck this shit up, look. Damn, whoever was messing with this car, they really messed everything up on this. Alright, so I tried to take the knob off from the top, the shift knob, and I'm pretty sure the people that did the swap, they glued the knob on, which is really stupid, because I mean, I tried everything I could to take it off. I know they're supposed to be on there hard, but I tried every single thing I could. So what we're going to do, we're just going to drop that whole knob. That's the only option that we have. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pop out this bushing right here and just push that whole bushing out so it just, it just pops right out. All right, so this bushing right here has a little slot on both sides that is in the body. This little uh, bracket will just slide in there. So you just wanna pop that out. You could pry on it with some small flathead or like a pick and just get it out all the way. There we go. This will release the whole shifter from inside the, inside the body. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take off this transmission cross member which will let the whole transmission come down a little bit. After we've done that, you have two options. You can go ahead and remove this line for the slave cylinder or you can remove the entire slave cylinder itself from the transmission and just pull it out and let it hang down here. That way you don't have to worry about all the brake fluid leaking out from the master cylinder. So what we'll do, we'll go, we're going to go ahead and just remove this whole slave cylinder first and then we'll continue. It's held in with two 13 millimeter bolts. One on the top and one on the bottom. So it's held in with two 13 millimeter nuts. Then you just pull it out just like that. All right, so now we want to go ahead and support this transmission. Now we can drop this cross member 
and let the transmission tilt back just a little bit that we can access all the bolts. All right, so we have the engine supported. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove this transmission cross member. Uh, there's four 13 millimeter bolts. The people forgot to put one back in, but we've got three other ones that we're just gonna pull off. Then we'll go ahead and let the transmission come down a little bit and start pulling all the bolts off of around the whole bell housing. And they stripped that one completely. My God. Whoever, whoever did the swap does not know what the hell they were doing and they should not be around cars. Like they barely put half the shit back together. All right, so now that we have the transmission supported, we're gonna go and start pulling off all these bolts. We'll start from the bottom. We'll do these two uh, E10 bolts, external Torx 10. Then we'll do uh, all the ones on the very, very top and start coming down the sides. What you're gonna need for this, you're gonna need a really, really long extension and a lot of wobble sockets or wobbly extensions as well. All right, so we're gonna get on this very, very top bolt first and remove that. All right, so once I have these off, then I'll just show you guys where all the bolts go. But like I said, all you're gonna need is a long extension, a couple of wobble extensions, and E14 to the top two bolts, like on the very, very top in the center are E14. The starter bolts are E12. There's another E14 on each side of the bell housing, and there's two more E12s and two E10s or three E10s and one E12. I'll just show you guys all the bolts once they're out. All right, so I went ahead and pulled the transmission out. Once again, sorry for the noise. I'm not sure if it's been through the whole video. Uh, we're recording a little bit later. The neighbor, uh, my neighbor for the shop, he has a machine shop, so his machines are on right now. Uh, but yeah, let's go and get to what happened. So I went ahead and pulled the transmission off, as you could tell. I was having trouble pulling off this shift knob from inside the cabin, uh, as you guys saw earlier. So what I ended up doing was I just ended up removing this actual shift fork. Uh, it just goes just like this. And there's this little clip on the other side. This clip slides into this groove. Just like that, it just goes in. I went in and pulled the clip out. Once you remove this, then the whole shifter can go like 360 degrees. It could tilt anyway. And that way it'll allow it to just fall right down. And this is the actual bushing that goes in the body that we removed earlier as well. There's the two little notches. So we have that, all that out. Now let me go and show you guys all the bolts that hold the transmission to the engine. All right, so it turns out they also ended up using the wrong bolts to mate the transmission to the engine. So what should be, what should have happened is there's the long bolts that go right here, the E14 long ones, one through here, one through this side. They just have two of these short ones that are E14 as well. And both of those go on this hole right here and this one right here as well. So we've got one extra long one that should that doesn't belong. And it should matter of fact, that one goes there and this really extra long one is not from this car. Now, we've got the two E12 bolts. The starter goes in right here and the E12 bolts hold the starter in, just like that. This divot also goes into the starter uh, when you're reinstalling it, a quick tip is to grind it down just a little bit, sand it, up, sand it up and grind it down, whichever you prefer. That way it slides in a lot smoother. You can also grease it a little bit so it's yeah, easier to put the starter back in. Then we've got three E10 bolts. One goes right here. One goes right here. And the last one goes from the other side. The last one goes right here. And there we have it. So once you get the transmission off, you can use like a little pry bar once you have all the bolts off. This little fork has to come out through the whole clutch and pressure plate assembly. And once it's out, then you can go ahead and just pry it off just a little bit and then pull it straight out. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that it's coming, if the whole engine's tilted, you wanna make sure it's coming out at an angle. You just wanna make sure that you're coming out in a straight and like, you know, slanted uh, method. That way you don't really catch up on any of the grooves inside the clutch assembly. 